Okay, so today what we're going to learn is how to make a clay whistle. And here's one that's been bisque fired. It's actually two whistles, one on top, one on bottom. The one on the top is a little bit smaller. And this is something to keep in mind when you're making your whistle, is that uh, depending on the size of your whistle determines the pitch. So when I blow on this one, you'll hear that it's a higher pitch than this bottom one. So we'll just show you that right now. Quite a bit lower. And if at the end I'll show you this uh, when I make the whistle, if you wanted to add a little hole, uh, add it to the the side, either side, of a center line that goes through the mouthpiece to the opening. And you can uh, have different notes. And that would sound like this. And that's kind of fun too. Um, and this is a bird. You can see it has wings, um, little eyes. And you're going to make it into an animal when you're all done. So it'll be an animal whistle when you're all finished. Okay, right here I have a piece of uh, clay. And you don't need the whole piece of clay. If you wanted to make a bigger whistle, uh, you could use a bigger piece of clay. I'm going to make kind of a medium size to average whistle. And so I'll just use a, a smaller piece of clay. Um, the clay's already been wedged. So make sure that you wedge it before you get started. Um, and I like to just kind of pat the clay into a ball shape. What that does is it just gets me ready to go. Okay, And I can have a little bit of an idea about the size of my whistle. So it'll be a little bit bigger than this. Okay, We start by making a pinch pot. Uh, we did that at the beginning of the semester. And this will be a little bit of a review for that. So you're just going to take your thumb, you know, push it in until you're about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. Now when we made the the pinch pots or the little bowls, uh, we had them come out. Uh, for this, because we want to close it off, we want it just to come kind of straight up. And so you'll notice when I pinch and rotate, I don't let it get very wide. And that just makes my job easier when I'm doing the rest of my whistle. So I just kind of pinch it, making sure the walls are about a quarter an inch thick all the way up. Feel for any lumps so you can make it just nice and even. It'll make it easier to make your whistle. Okay. So there we have a nice, nice even bowl shape. And now I want to take my fingers right here. I'm going to squeeze it. I squeeze and then I rotate and I squeeze again and squeeze. I kind of keep doing that and you can see that it wrinkles and puckers and uh, what I want to do for that is I'm going to go back and pinch that. It gets thicker too and so I want to pinch it back to being a quarter of an inch thick and you'll notice when I pinch I'm pinching with my fingers at an angle so that I'm not widening the hole when I pinch. Okay so go around pinch that nice and flat again come in and squeeze it some more Pinch it. Okay, now what you'll notice is that my finger, I can't make this hole any smaller and keep putting my finger in there, so now I'm just going to carefully close it. And now I'm going to close it all the way. Okay, so now it's kind of like a bubble inside, okay, it's hollow. Um, and so now if, it, if I misshapened it, like it usually gets kind of flat on the side that I was closing, I can, I can go back and, and push on it and make it nice and round again. For your whistle, I encourage you, you really should go around and smooth all this out. Okay, uh, because this is a demonstration and you don't need to watch me smooth clay any more than you already have, I'll just move on to the next step. So I closed the... Uh, the ball here and I want to pick somewhere else on my my whistle um, anywhere else except for there okay and so it's there I I just go about 90 degrees around the circle or sphere and I pinch my mouthpiece now when I pinch it out you can see right here I pinch it so that it has kind of a flat top goes down and there's a mouthpiece right here it doesn't need to be real big and it also doesn't don't don't pinch it too skinny like you want it so it's nice and fat 
and I'll show you a little bit more about why that is later on. Okay, so then you take a pencil, right here, pencil, and you're going to insert it vertically into the top, and you want it kind of in the center, so right about there, and you want it on the inside of the wall. So it's going to go in right there. And so I take that and I, I kind of twist it so it doesn't tear the clay. And I can feel it made it into the hole, and then I rock it back and forth toward the mouthpiece. And what that's going to do is make just a straight line. Let's get real close and see. A straight line from the inside wall all the way up. Okay. Next, I put my finger on the top. And I want to bevel or make a sharp edge with the top of my whistle right there. You can see it has like a nice sharp edge. And it's gradual all the way down to the inside wall. So I have it straight on this side, bevel on this side. Now I'm ready for the next step. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you want your tools clean. In this case, it, it's a pencil. You want to make sure there's no clay on there. If you're trying to, to make that hole with, with clay stuck all over your pencil, it's going to mess it up. And the important thing with the whistle is that everything's lined up. And so you can see this knife right here. It has a bunch of dry clay on it. All you need to do is take it to your canvas board and drag it along there. And you can see now it's clean, so when I make the hole through my mouthpiece, it's going to be nice and straight. It won't have any dragging pieces of dry clay. So to do that, I'm going to insert the knife horizontally through the mouthpiece until it just touches. I don't think you can see that, but it touches inside the the back wall in there. I take my free hand or the finger, the hand not um, holding the knife, and I push my bevel down. Okay. And let's see. So you can see that that bevel now is resting on the top of the blade. So I gently pull that out, and I go ahead and give it a try. And it doesn't work. It often doesn't work the first time. And one thing that you can see is right here, like the the vertical um, the vertical wall isn't vertical anymore. Because when I stuffed the knife through, it, it messed it up. So I go back to my pencil, roll it back and forth, straighten up that inside wall. I take my knife. clean it off and then really carefully I want to go through the exact same hole that I did before make sure the top of the bevel is touching make sure everything's lined up and it still didn't work that's okay because you can see that it's messed up on this uh, inside edge there so I'm going to go back and smooth that out again Clean off the knife, slide it through the mouthpiece, make sure the bevel's lined up, mouthpiece. So there it's kind of whistling, and I think I can get it better than that, so I'm going to clean that up one more time. Now this, the cleaning up part, and making sure that the vertical the vertical line is vertical and the horizontal line is lined up with the bevel sometimes takes the longest and that's okay it just happens that way I'll take that out clean up a little bit of that excess clay and there you have a whistle okay now if I wanted to make make it so that it had played different notes take a knife and you want to twist as you poke the hole in the side and the reason you twist is so that it doesn't deform the shape of the whistle and you can smooth that out and now you have different notes <clears throat> after you have your whistle you need to look at it turn it you know, figure out how you can make this into an animal whistle. Um, the animal uh, can be any animal, it doesn't matter what kind. Uh, 
and you need to add the arms and legs using slabs or coils or other pinch pots, any of the techniques that we've learned. And when you're all done, go ahead and put it on the shelf in the kiln room, and I'll fire it and get it back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.